Okay, great guys. So thank you for joining me. Sorry, there's a little bit of delay today. I'm trying to get this set up. This whole new uh, virtual seminar thing is still a little new to me, but I'm going to go ahead and get started today. And uh, hopefully you guys can see what we're doing. So today I want to talk about a very requested comment uh, topic actually, and that is weight loss surgery. Um, what happens after weight loss surgery? What happens when people develop extra skin? And believe it or not, um, most people don't have to deal with the extra skin, but in some people, they can be an issue. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we can do after people lose weight, after they have weight loss surgery. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started now. So hopefully you guys can see my screen over here. So what we talk about when we talk about weight loss surgery and extra skin removal afterwards, um, there's different topics. And the most common uh, used term is a paniculectomy or an abdominoplasty or a tummy tuck. They are basically different names for similar surgeries. So what we find after people lose weight, um, and a lot of people, they do develop some extra skin, especially around the midsection. Uh, and that skin, no matter how much weight people lose, becomes lax, it becomes um, floppy, and the fat's gone, but the stretch skin remains afterwards. So we're gonna talk about what is a paniculectomy, how is the surgery done, where are the scars, what happens to the belly button, what's the recovery like, and exactly what do we do and why do we do these surgeries. So again, what is a paniculectomy or a tummy tuck? Um, this surgery is basically a procedure to remove extra fat from around the midsection of a patient's abdomen. And all the fat from below the belly button, including the belly button, is removed and actually stressed, stretched down to below the pubic area here. Um, because people that have weight loss surgery develop issues with rashes, with difficulty wearing clothing, many times insurance will pay for this procedure and it's not just a cosmetic procedure, but it's also a procedure that can help people with their quality of life and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So again, why do this? Why should someone underdo this? What we find is in certain people that develop extra skin, um, that skin starts to chafe. It develops what we call intertrigo. It's a, it develops rashes, and that can become quite problematic for a lot of people. It can lead pa patients to having infections. Um, activity can be limited because the extra skin's there. It's difficult to move. It's difficult to walk and ambulate. And ultimately, we know that when the skin goes away, when that body's natural contour is restored, we do have a, a big improvement in patient's self-esteem. Not only do they feel better, they can function better, and uh, overall it's a win-win for a people that, that need this surgery. So again, will you need this surgery? Is this a surgery that um, everyone's gonna need after weight loss surgery? It's a very common question that I get. And the truth is no, most patients do not need to undergo a paniculectomy or an abdominoplasty. Probably less than 10 to 15% of people that lose weight actually need it. In most patients, their skin's very elastic. That skin slowly comes back together as people lose weight. But in certain people, and as we get older, the skin does tend to get what we call less elastic. That means it doesn't stretch and come back as easily as it did in the past. So generally people that lose over 120, 150 pounds are the ones that usually need this. So again, who qualifies for an abdominoplasty or a paniculectomy? Insurance does, has, does have very strict criteria for who qualifies for the surgery. Um, in order to qualify for surgery, you have to have a, a lot of different requirements met. Number one, most people have to have lost about uh, 100 pounds of their previous weight. 
Number two, the insurance company is gonna make sure that these patients not only lost the weight, but have kept the weight off. So in order to qualify, they have to be at least 18 months post-op from their surgery. We don't wanna perform a surgery on someone to take the extra skin off, and then they lose additional weight. So we look for the weight to actually um, become very stable. We look for the, the weight to, um, to be not changing anymore. And also there has to be a reason for insurance to pay for this. And in many times we say that there has to be signs of inner trigo, that means the rashing or the infections of the skin, um, and difficulty with people wearing clothing or performing their daily uh, life activities. So again, how's the surgery done? Uh, the surgery is usually performed in a overnight stay in the hospital. There is general anesthesia involved, so patients are completely asleep for this. And the procedure usually takes about one to three hours to be done. So most people do have a hospitalization and that's mostly to make sure that the patients are well hydrated, their pain is controlled, and I find it to be uh, a lot easier to deal with any post-operative issues such as pain in the hospital. So, here's a quick video that kind of explains things on how it's done, if we can get this to play now. Again, during the surgery, what we see is that the, the patient does have extra skin here. We do make an incision uh, with a knife or with a scalpel while the patient is asleep. And we work on basically pulling the skin back over the muscles. So in these patients, the muscles are actually not stretched out. It's the skin that's overlapped over it. So we take the skin, we make an incision, we pull it down. The patient's um, belly button's actually moved and the old belly button and all the extra skin is cut off. And what we do is the new belly button is created from the old belly button stock. And we have incisions here, a circle around the belly button, stitches are placed down here. And that's how the procedure actually works. So recovery from this procedure um, expect to be out of work for usually about two to three weeks. Of course, everyone's recovery is a little bit different. Um, the recovery depends on how much skin we take off and how healthy patients are. So a little variable, but for most people expect to be out for about two to three weeks. Most people do have drains that are left in. Uh, those drains take care of any extra fluid that the body makes during and after the surgery. And most of the time these drains come out in about five to 10 days. It's very important for patients to wear an abdominal binder after surgery. That abdominal binder basically controls the inflammation. It uh, helps that skin kind of reset to where it needs to go and also provides some comfort and reminds patients not to do any heavy lifting. So it's important to give that skin time to heal down. The sutures are usually removed in about 10 to 14 days after surgery. And again, we want all our patients wearing their abdominal binders every day for two weeks. And most of the time we wear them uh, when they're moving and ambulating for four weeks afterwards. And that's how to get really the best result uh, with these procedures. So what to expect when you get to the hospital? Um, this procedure, uh, again, is all about setting the patient up and it's very important that when patients come to the hospital we mark them so the markings that we do are basically to to figure out where we're going to cut where we're going to move the belly button and how we're going to rearrange the skin so it has the best cosmetic result um, here you can see a patient that we did here are the skin markings and if you look carefully this is what i mark 
and this is what I use to determine how much skin is actually coming off. So all this area in blue here was actually removed. And the final result is this. We create a new belly button with the patient's old belly button here. And once we take out all this extra loose skin, we see a nice flat abdomen. And here are the scars. So the scars that we do leave behind are almost always tucked in the patient's waistline and they can be hidden very well with clothing or a, a bikini. Here's a video actually of um finished up with Melissa's um hysterectomy. As you see here, the abdomen is completely flat. Now all that extra skin has been taken off. And we're just getting ready for the final touches and we show that was great results. So thanks for watching. Before and after pictures are always very helpful to demonstrate what happens uh, with these patients. So again, here we can see significant, significant amount of uh, extra skin here. And um, this skin, again, after 18 months of, of, of weight loss, once the weight loss is plateaued and stabilized, usually doesn't get much better. And the final result, of course, is a flat stomach, um, smooth contour, and better ability to, to move, walk around, and wear clothing. Here's another one of our patients. Again, you can see significant amounts of skin. Um, even though this patient had a healthy BMI and lost you know, over 120 pounds after surgery, that skin was still getting in the way, and the final result is here. Again, uh, this patient has very good results. Here's another patient, another weight loss surgery patient that lost over 110 pounds. Not only did she have significant amounts of extra skin, but also she had some scarring here from previous surgery. So we were able to go in remove all this extra skin, cut out the scar, and give her a much, uh, much better, smoother abdomen without that old scar that she had that was taken out with the surgery. Uh, again, here's a picture from the side. Um, another patient that did very well, uh, got down to a very normal, healthy BMI of about 25 but the skin was not getting better. She also is a patient that had multiple pregnancies. After um, weight loss surgery, we were able to go in and tighten that skin up. And here she still has her, some of her sutures in. And this is uh, the result uh, seven days after surgery. Of course, all this extra loose skin was, was taken out. It was stretched down. This is, a, this is a result only about 12 days after surgery. And eventually, of course, these sutures do get removed around the scar here and the belly button. And um, she was very happy with her results. So thank you guys for being patient. This is our first Facebook Live um, kind of presentation. Uh, we're trying to get with the times of social distancing and COVID. This uh, should be recorded and um, will be left on, on the group forum. So today, if anyone's live out there watching right now, I'm happy to ask uh, to answer any questions anyone might have. If you guys want to go ahead and just post it on the on the left here. So maybe to help you guys out, some of the most common questions we see is again, how's it, what's the scarring like? What's the pain like? Um, and how long do I have to have my drains in? So a big part of all the procedures that we do is uh, it's very important to educate our patients. So expect to have pain medication for usually three to five days after surgery. Um, another thing is uh, really try to um, learn how to manage your drains. The drains are little tubes that come out on either side of the patient's incisions, and we'll teach you how to manage that drain. Once the drain output is low, less than about 10 to 15 cc's a day, then the drains come out. Um, another question is, what do we do to prevent having to do this? I, I don't wanna have a weight loss surgery and then have to have my skin removed. 
And the truth is, most patients do not need to have uh, these procedures done. Usually the people that need it again are the ones that lose over 150 pounds. Uh, the way to avoid it really is slow, consistent weight loss. And one of the best things about weight loss surgery is it's a slow weight loss trend over the course of about a year. So while you know we try to tell our patients to diet, to exercise, to help improve their overall health, that's one way of preventing uh, these skin issues, but sometimes it's just very unpredictable. So I can't say there's one particular trick to avoid needing this, but again, um, most people don't need this, but when they do need it, it can be a very gratifying surgery after surgery. Uh, yeah, so you know we do offer um, the paniculectomies uh, for our patients, and um, it's a it's a lot of uh, paperwork with insurance. Insurance does not want to pay for any strictly cosmetic procedure. So when you talk about having a paniculectomy on a weight loss patient, uh, we have to follow very strict criteria for them to pay. Uh, I much rather prefer our patients to have insurance pay for this. We do offer paniculectomies on our patients. I, um, I find that's a great way of keeping the continuity of care with our patients. So again, for most insurances, in order for them to pay for these procedures, we have to tell them, hey, listen, this is not just for cosmetics. We have to show insurance that our patients have extra skin, it's staying there, it's causing them rashes, it's causing them difficulty wearing clothing, and um, we have to document that with uh, pictures in the office. So the girls in the office are very familiar with this procedure and how to document that. And uh, most people do have benefits, if they have weight loss surgery benefits, to have the extra skin removed. And again, the important thing to remember is this is not just a cosmetic procedure. This is a, a procedure to help our patients walk, move, um, and, and basically have an improved quality of life. So the question is, do I do inner thighs? Um, many times if patients need uh, additional surgeries, I tend to focus on the stomach. Um, we have plenty of plastic surgeons in the area that do do complete body contouring. And what body contouring means is not only do they work on the stomach, but they work on the arms and legs. Many times it's difficult for insurance to pay for the arms and legs. It can be done, but for arms and legs, many times I do refer to, uh, to plastic surgeons that all they do is what we call body contouring. And if patients have questions with that, we're happy to see them in office and get them to uh, a surgeon that can help get them the best result. Uh, another question is, where are the drains? So. The drains are actually left here on either side. There's usually one drain that exits the skin here, right about in the bikini line, another one here. And after about, again, usually five, 10, 14 days, the drains come out um, and we teach our patients how to manage the drains. They're very small little tubes and they usually don't get in the way. So the exit site's right here and here on either side of the pubic bone. Uh, another question is, is it commonly covered by insurance? Uh, again, um, if you meet criteria, and it depends on your plan. So if, if someone does feel they have extra weight and they're at least a year out of surgery, their weight's stabilized, they're happy to come in. We'll look up your insurance company. We will um, see what criteria has to be met for that individual patient. But to answer your question, yes, most of the time insurance does cover for this procedure. Uh, a lot of questions I'm getting now are, what about inner thighs and legs? That can be a problem for some patients too. Uh, we do offer, um, we have a lot of plastic surgeons that do cover the inner arms and leg surgery. It's called brachioplasty. And uh, I'll be happy to see if we can get a, one of our plastic surgery colleagues that does that to do a presentation um, to kind of give you guys more information on that too. So another question is, what BMI should I be at in order to qualify for surgery? Um, usually, in most of our patients, we want to get that BMI in that healthy range where 
under 35, preferably in the 30 to 25 range. But that number is not the end all be all in post-op patients. Um, I don't tend to focus so much on the BMI when it comes to doing these uh, skin uh, removal surgeries on patients. It's all about where people started at. Some people started at a BMI of 70, 80, and they get down to a BMI of 40, and they would really benefit from this surgery. It's more about the fact that we need to make sure that the patient's weights have stabilized. So it's very important that um, that weight stabilizes after surgery and um, we're able to, to have insurance pay for it. And as far as the sutures go, the sutures are taken out in office uh, about two weeks after surgery, depending on how the wounds look like. And of course, we do do that in the office. You don't need an additional procedure. We use multiple kinds of sutures. Um, we use sutures that are absorbable underneath the skin. And also we have sutures that uh, are taken out on the skin two weeks out, out after surgery. Uh, another question is, what about breasts? Um, you know, a lot of people, it's women, uh, after they lose weight, they tend to lose that adipose tissue or fatty tissue, not just from their stomach and their arms, but from their thighs and their breast. Uh, so we do see a lot of women that do have a reduction in breast size after surgery. Uh, that is usually considered a cosmetic procedure by insurance. Many times, most times, insurance companies will not um, pay for the breast uh, reconstruction or augmentation after surgery. But again, we do have a lot of plastic surgeons, like I said, that we work with. Sometimes we combine the procedure where sometimes insurance will pay for the paniculectomy or the skin removal, and at the same time, a plastic surgeon come in and uh, do a breast reconstruction or augmentation if needed to help uh, save some of the cost to a patient. So a lot of these questions are very individualized, depends on um, how far along you are in your weight loss journey. And um, we're happy to have those the talks with the patients individually to answer your questions. Uh, the other thing to remember is that the body is consistently changing. And usually it takes about 18 months to two years for the body's skin to naturally come back. A lot of people come in seven, six, eight, nine months after surgery and, and, and they see their skin looser now, but the skin's a very resilient, um, amazing organ. Many times that skin will um, come back. So again, you have to be patient with your body, but after about that 18, two year month mark, it is what it is, um, whether it's your, 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 your breast, your thighs, your arms, or, or your abdomen, um, we're happy to kind of help you guys get not only the best uh, health benefit from the surgery, but also cosmetics and appearance are important too. Uh, another question is, does collagen help? Um, you know, collagen is not a bad thing. Protein is also a very important thing. Uh, it's very important that our bariatric patients maintain a healthy um, post-operative diet. So when you talk about skin, when you talk about energy, um, protein is a very, very important thing. Um, so I, I do strongly believe that our patients do need to be taking a multivitamin. They need to have a nice, well-rounded diet, especially when you talk about sleeve gastrectomy patients. Uh, the majority of their nutritional uh, intake can be met with a multivitamin and a, a well-rounded diet. When you talk about gastric bypass patients, uh, it's a lot harder, more challenging sometimes to meet the requirements that they need for protein multivitamins. So all of our patients should really be knowing exactly what they're taking in their body. So when you talk about collagen, protein, multivitamins, um, it's all important in the healing process. It's all important in the body's natural function. Uh, I haven't seen any specific studies that say if you take X amount of collagen, your skin will be better. Um, but I don't think it hurts, especially in the immediate three to six month post-operative window when you talk about 
um, having low protein levels in our patients and them experiencing hair loss. Uh, so overall, it, it's, it's, it's an important role. I don't think the collagen is going to hurt, but it's important to look, about, look at the whole well-rounded nutritional benefit that our patient needs uh, after surgery. So multivitamin, clean, healthy diet, knowing exactly what's going in. Again, we tell our patients we, uh, we don't eat anymore to, to feel good. We eat now for nutrition. We eat to um, give our body the building blocks that it needs so we can become optimized. So I encourage you guys, uh, if you have any more questions, please um, go ahead and post it. Uh, I really want to try to have uh, this online community um, have a, a monthly seminar like this. We're working out some tech issues um, and uh, take it or, or not, unfortunately, the way things are now, a lot of what we do is going to have to be virtual. And um, I encourage you guys, if you do want to see any specific presentations on nutrition, on exercise, on dieting, um, go ahead and go to the, the Facebook forum and just tell us what you want to hear. And we work with a lot of different providers, physicians, and uh, dietitians uh, in the area. And uh, we're happy to kind of keep things going. And again, um, your life doesn't begin and end with this surgery. There's a lot that goes on in the preoperative phase, during surgery, after surgery. And I really do consider this a whole weight loss journey. We're happy to kind of help you guys through it. Um, so let us know uh, what you need, what you'd like, and uh, we'll do our best to kind of keep the group forms going.